drafts, you know, niche NBA draft Twitter, whoever it is, who's your guy? Mark, who's your guy? Uh, I, I mean, I think my guy right now has to be AJ Liddell. I'm, I'm really excited about who he can be uh, in the NBA, you know, out of Ohio State. He's more of a combo big uh, at 6'7", but really, really good length. Um, I think he just provides a lot of interesting things uh, in the modern NBA that, that, that I see really translating. Would one of those things be the fact that he averaged 2.6 blocks per game at like six foot seven? That would definitely be part of it. Uh, so it's interesting because he's more of a, he has to really load up to, to, to get off the ground quickly, but he's an exceptional leaper. And especially like he's not somebody you're going to project as a primary rim protector. If he was, then I'd have more questions about what his load time is like. But especially considering he's making his plays off the ball, playing more as a weak side guy, and potentially has some utility as more of a small ball big. Um, I really like what that could look like for him. I mean, he went from last year, like he's always been pretty athletic, but last year he went from um, somebody who could really be pretty impactful off the ball to this year being like the most impactful um, non-center off the ball in college. So we've got, yeah, right at the top of the draft, we've got, you know, Smith and Bunkero and Chet, if you want to call him a four, um, you know, Keegan Murray probably is a four as well. Does Liddell to you slide in behind those guys in terms of the best power forward fours in the draft? Yeah, how does he compare with with other guys who will play that position? Yeah, I mean it's definitely different because uh, I, I do think in some ways age can be uh, really finicky and, and sometimes made up a little bit too much. But I think he slots in right behind them. You know, around the same area, probably just slightly below Jeremy Sohan and, and Tarius. And it's obviously dependent on team. I think you know. For EJ could be somebody who makes a lot more sense for a team right now, a team that doesn't really have time to wait for ancillary skills to develop. Um, but I think that's also something, and it's something you mentioned in a, in a draft review as well. Like he's somebody who can come in and play right away. Like he's one of the guys that I look at in this draft class. If he ends up starting games as rookie year, I don't think I would be super surprised. I think a lot's going to depend on what the shot looks like. I, I have a lot of faith in the shot. Um, but I mean, he comes in automatically and, and is going to be an impactful player. In my mock that I did at the start of this week, I had him at 18 to the Bulls. Is that too low, too high for you? What, how do you view that? I think that's perfect, honestly. Like, I view him as like, I, I mean, I'm not saying I would take him there, but I could understand if a team, if a team maybe took him late lottery. You know, I think that uh, just looking at the kind of player that he is and what he could bring, I think that there's some sense there. Uh, but I'd imagine, you know, just based on how everything's looked, it's going to be late teens probably early 20s as well but especially a team like the bulls who is very much in need of this kind of player especially for rotational depth he makes a lot of sense when you look when you look through his numbers and you try and pick out you know where's the weakness it doesn't really stand out like he averaged almost 20 points per game he had a true shooting of 60 he hit 37 percent from three he did his free throw as well um yeah, he averaged two and a half assists what what's the thing that he needs to work on you got to the line at a really good rate as well like 53 percent free throw attempt rate which is a really big number what's the thing that you worry about as he enters the nba i think it's less worry and more just i'm interested to see what happens i think part of the reason i'm higher on him is i view him as a better passer than i think consensus does um like a lot of his reps came out of the post this year um and he I don't, I, I don't want to say that he misses reads. Like, obviously, like, in-game, I think there are reads that he misses. But also part of that is he just was so strong and capable of bullying people in the post where he would be willing to take on a two-on-one or, or be willing to um, just pass up an open look in order to take something more contested himself. I think that's going to change at the next level. We also really didn't get to see him as much as a pick-and-roll role man as I, I, I think we're going to see in the NBA because I think where his passing and his court vision could really translate – is being used as a role man and getting to do one or two dribbles off the balance and make a quick pass to the corner. Um, so I think a, a lot's just going to depend on how how does that develop for him? How quickly does he process the court in new areas? Um, that's going to be the biggest thing for him, in my opinion. Last question on Liddell. Um, when I did my mock draft on Monday, I spoke about you know really trying to prioritize wings in that you know six four to mm -hmm. six, well six five to six ten sort of range that are switchy that can play in the playoffs that can defend multiple positions that can provide a little bit of offense. And to me, he fits right in there. Yeah, six foot seven, switchable forward, can protect the rim, all that sort of stuff. But yeah, ESPN's top one hundred has him thirty eighth. The Tankathon mock draft has him twenty sixth. Are you seeing or are you thinking NBA teams are going to be leaning more towards well, let's get wings, let's get forwards in versus you know, just pure, I guess, talent, so to speak, where some of these other sites have him pushed way down? 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, it's it's a it's interesting based on just line of thought. You know, I think a lot of it's going to become what does a team ultimately think of him? Like, I, I think especially for a team that needs more saying immediate helps wrong way to put it. Like, I think he's he's still clearly a prospect, but he's somebody who I think has a floor already that that can help at the next level. Like there's somebody like Nikola Jovic is somebody who I would probably have over EJ, but also Nikola Jovic is not ready to help at the NBA level right now, in my opinion, at least not to that level of the winning basketball. Like I think um, if you're a team like, let's say the Bucs, like 24 is not a reach in the slightest, but I think the Bucs could definitely be a team that looks at him and goes like, hey, we could use another guy like this. I don't think that's not, they need more shot creation than anything else. But um, like you're mentioning, I, I think, especially for somebody who I think will probably uh, do pretty well in interviews, um, I could imagine a team being like, hey, this fits what, what we view modern basketball to be, and he makes a lot of sense for us.